And this has been a problem because even in the past, they didn't even have a playoff. You know, it was, hey, listen, there's no playoffs. Uh, yeah. We pick you. We pick you. I, I played in the Fiesta Bowl. And I was like, oh, what bowl game are we in? Oh, you're in the Fiesta Bowl. Great. Because I play, you know, New Year's Day, flew out to Arizona. By the way, got our ass beat by Utah. It was terrible. But at the end of the day, okay, <laughs> at the end of the day, when you see that, you just, then there's the tire bowl and there's the toilet bowl and there's the butter bowl. Nobody and it, 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 to me, all these bowl games are an opportunity for people to market, aver- advertise. I love it. That's great. But realistically, that's all about money and media and marketing. And I'm all about that. The playoffs is where people want to watch. No one's watching. You know, you have the in NFL, you have the wild card, the playoffs, right? They need a wild card right now for Florida State. I think people are, are, are feeling that. But no one wants to know who the Bears are, are playing, uh, you know, Are they in the bowl game that's located in somewhere? It's great for the kids. It's great for everything that's going on. I'm not knocking that. The truth is they need a real playoff market. And the fact that the NFL played this for a long time. Dude, they've needed this this. for a long time. When I was growing up, it was crazy. Like, they decided the national champion, A, vote on a poll. But, two, there was no game at the end of the season. So, the the Big Ten played the Pac-10 winner, and if they happen to be one and two, then you got a national championship game. But sometimes it wouldn't. It'd be like number one versus number 11 or something. And then if they won that game, they won the national championship. And it's like, you didn't even play the top team. Then they switched to the BCS, then they moved to this, and now they're going to the to a real playoff bracket. But why did that take 30 years? That's the part I don't understand. <laughs> I, what, what bothers me, what bothers me, and I'm going to end, end this segment today with this. And Brent, so glad to have you on the show. First of all, I didn't thank you enough. We are excited to have you every day at 10 o'clock and all the people that are coming on. Um, yeah, the expansion, here, I'll explain all you. that later. Big markets and networks, all the stuff reaching out. I'm excited about that, but so excited to have you. Um, what I don't understand is realistically who's making the decisions Ultimately, you know, it, yeah, there's a selection committee. You know, who's really selecting the committee, realistically? Who is Who has the final say of what really happens? And so people really want to know that. So we need to get on the show some coaches. We need to get some people that might be in the selection committee on here and tell us, look, here's what's really happening. You, why don't you spill the beans and tell us why so people at Florida State can go home at night and say, Kind of understand that, you know? And then and, and what I want to tell people is, um, and Brent, if you have anything to add to this, add it now. But I'm going to close this out with something I want to say. You have anything to say, anything else about Florida State, Alabama, Michigan, uh, Texas, Washington. And again, Washington and Texas, you forget them every time. When you're talking well, about this playoff, you don't think Washington. I, I, I will end this by saying, like you mentioned, I, I started and created a revolutionary platform to love and serve student athletes. And I, and it broke my heart to watch those Florida state kids after everything that they did to not be able to get a chance to play. I'm happy for Alabama and Texas and Washington and Michigan. And I'm not saying they shouldn't, they should, they earned it too, but it really, I was felt really bad for those kids. I feel like they, they deserved it. Uh, and that, that's really what I would end on. But the good news is we don't have to have this conversation ever again because next year we're going to have 12 teams. That's and true. these these top teams, any there's never going to be 13 undefeated teams. So I feel really good that, that we're going to get get all the undefeated teams into the system moving forward. And that that's something we should all look forward to. Hey, guys, thanks for watching and tuning into the Brandon Mason Show. Please remember to like and subscribe. Until next time. <laughs>